Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and we're going to run a one sample t-test. We're going to use the p-value approach to make our decision and we're going to let Minitab do the work. According to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, electric bills for single-family homes in the South average $210 per month. The Hicksville Chamber of Commerce randomly selects eight households and finds that their average electric bill is $255 with a sample standard deviation of $55. At an alpha of .05, are electric bills in Hicksville significantly higher than the average? We're going to go ahead and get our information together before we head over to Minitab. And so it's been established that the mean is $210. The sample that Hicksville took gave them a sample average, or X bar, of $255 and they had a sample size of 8. We're given the sample standard deviation which is S and that was $55 and because we have the sample standard deviation and not the population we know that this triggers us running a t-test. So now let's figure out HO and HA. So the established or assumed value of the mean is $210. Now we need to figure out what our sign is. So we look in the problem for an indicator of direction and it says significantly higher than average and so higher goes into alternative. And because HO and HA are mathematical opposites we know this is less than or equal to. I also knew that my greater than had to go here because there is never any version of the equal to sign in the alternative hypothesis. I also know from my HA, because of this greater than sign, that this looks like a arrow. And if I was using a critical value approach, I'd run a one-tailed right test. Let's plug this stuff into Minitab. In Minitab, I'm going to go to Stat, Basic Statistics, and I'm going to run a one-sample T. Remember, I only have the sample standard deviation. So I have summarized data, and my sample size was 8, and the sample mean was found to be $255, with a sample standard deviation of $55. We're going to perform a hypothesis test. It's hypothesized or established that the average is 210, and now we're going to go to our options. So we had an alpha 0.05 which gives us a 95% confidence interval. Um, and our alternative sign in our alternative was greater than. So now that I've got this, I'm going to hit OK twice. Now, Minitab has run my one sample t-test for me. And what I'm after here is because I'm using a p-value approach, so I'm looking right down here at the p-value that was calculated by Minitab. I'm going to take that back and finish running my test and draw my conclusion. Remember that our decision criteria under a p-value approach is if the p-value is greater than alpha, our decision will be do not reject HO. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then our decision will be to reject HO. Remember, when p is low, HO must go. So from Minitab, Minitab told me that my p-value was 0 0.027. I'm going to compare that to my alpha 0 0.05. And I know that p is lower than alpha, so our decision will be to reject HO and say that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the average electric bills are actually higher. Just a quick reminder about these p-values when we're running a t-test. Because of the nature of the student t distribution, we can't find a p-value from a distribution table. So in order to get this p-value, you'll need to either use a piece of software like Minitab or simply look for one of the p-value online calculators that you can get on the internet and that will help you go ahead and calculate this p-value 
when you're running a t-test. As always, I hope that you found this useful and thanks for watching.